physically right for me? I don't know. And there are so many things to think about. And let's say I've just had my first chemotherapy and my doctor says I might lose my hair or it might thin and I don't know what to do. There is a program, it's called Brighter Image, and we have free wigs for you. So even if you're not sure you're gonna be losing your hair, would you be more comforted in knowing that you have that taken care of no matter what? And maybe you do lose your hair and you end up wearing the wig, but infrequently. Isn't it just comforting to know that she's there waiting for you if you decide that you wanna do that? Now, many people decide to wear wigs for different reasons, and you don't ever have to feel like you need to wear one. So what would be a reason why someone would choose to wear a wig? Maybe you're going to an event and you don't want to share your cancer journey with the rest of the people in attendance at that event. A wig is a powerful tool at that time. You can minimize the effects that chemotherapy has on your exterior and show everyone how you're feeling visibly when you're showing what you're feeling inside, if that makes sense. Um, sometimes events come up too where you want to be there, you want to support people, but you don't want the attention to be drawn away at what's going on. So wig, again, is a powerful tool in that type of environment so that you can mingle and share and celebrate with the rest of the guests for whatever that function is. So you might not know where to start with your wig journey. So the Brighter Image consultation process is a 45-minute one-to-one consultation. We talk about all the different options that are available to you. So you may choose a wig. And by the way, that is the only limitation to this program is you get one free wig per year per diagnosis, which is amazing. We also have a myriad of scars, hats, and lots of different ways that you can cover your head if that's what you choose to do. There are many women and men out there rocking the bald look, and it's great, but that's not for everyone. So why not investigate and see what your signature look is during this time in your life? We have lots of fun choices. I'm wearing Tori, which is one of our signature choices, a nice stacked bob, and this is in dark chocolate. And it's a synthetic wig, which means it's ready to wear wash and go whenever I'm ready to go. So what you need to know about basic wig construction is these are synthetic. That means they're hair-like fibers made out of synthetic material. These are not heat-friendly synthetic, which there are wigs out there that are. These are sensitive to heat. So for those of you out there that like to cook, like to bake, you cannot open the oven when you're wearing a heat-sensitive synthetic fiber because it will singe and then your wig will be ruined. So what we have here in basic wig construction is we have a machine sewn flower lace top. And it's this that can be itchy on a bald head and we'll talk about some resolutions for that later. Uh, but what that allows is for a nice amount of volume and it's that volume that sometimes can be a little surprising to people when they first put on a wig. So. This is stretchable and it's also breathable. So for the most part, I say try wearing a wig without any sort of cap underneath because you're gonna have the most ventilation that way. But some people it's too itchy. And so like I said, we have options for that. In the back, just like our clothes, there's always a tag and that tag, just like our clothes, sits in the back. So in this particular instance, this tag is gonna sit right underneath your occipital ridge, right on the back of your head. Some people are sensitive to tags. Some people cut them out of all of their clothes and they're gonna to wanna to cut them out of their wigs, which is fine, but you should get to know your wig a little bit better before just going ahead and cutting it out. So if you're gonna cut the tag out, just make a little mark so that you know what where the back of the wig is. They also have two side tabs and these side tabs are triangulated and they have wire in them and these side tabs sit directly at your temples so that you can know if your wig is placed in the right placement. Sometimes you're going to need to tighten your wig. So they are constructed that you place your wig on it's going to be a little bit tight the first time you wear it. 
just like a new pair of shoes. It's a good thing to do at home, to wear it around for a couple of hours just so you get used to how it feels, and that will allow for it to stretch. Um, this particular wig has a hook, and this hook is how you are going to tighten the wig with time. There are hooks on each side, and each time you need to bring it in a little bit, you're gonna take this hook and place it in here and bring this one and do it to the matching loop on the other side of the wig. I have examples of other types of wig enclosures. They include Velcro, or sometimes you'll have a bra strap right here. This particular wig has Velcro, which actually gives you a lot of freedom on where to tighten it. So this particular style has a standard bra hook to tighten it, bra fastener to tighten it. So again, you're gonna start on the loosest fitting, but with time, you might tighten them a little bit. So you just got your wig home and you're getting to know her. She's new out of the box. You think she's very delicate, but realistically, you just wanna give her a good shake before you ever put her on your head. You don't have to be gentle. And then what I'm going to do is review with you how you're going to put that wig on. So the easiest thing to do is to place your thumbs right next to the side of the tag on either end. And then you're going to place the front of the wig low, right down on your brow bone. And then you're going to pull it on. Um, so I'm going to put my wig on with you at home. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna place our thumbs right next to the tag here. And we are going to take this lower part, the front of the wig, and we're gonna land that right at our brow bone area, anchor it down so we can get a nice snug pull. And what you wanna make sure to do is that the wig is laying flat so sometimes this will fold up on itself, so just use your thumb and make sure that that's flush with the back of your neck. And then you can flip up. And you might be thinking to yourself, how do I know how far to go back if I don't have a hairline to judge it on? And the best way to know is to place your pinky right at your brow bone, so where you feel the bone pressing out, and four of your fingers up, so right at the top of your pointer finger, is gonna be right about where your hairline is. And that's for a real natural look. If you like or have a nice, beautiful, smooth forehead, you can bring it back further. There are no rules. Um, the last step in this process is you wanna make sure that your ear tabs are sitting right on your temples. So let's say you've just put your wig on and then all of a sudden you have an asymmetrical haircut. You can quickly remedy that by bringing your ear tabs right front and center at your temples. The last thing about the ear tabs is sometimes they end up a little bit winged out when you're pulling your wig on, and that's not a problem at all. You can just bend them with your fingers. Remember, there's a wire in there to make it lay flush with your face. Um, some other secrets too. Let's say you're getting a little bit of tension wear from your wig. You can actually tuck your glasses underneath there to get a little release from that tension, um, just a little sneaky tip and trick that you can do. Continuing with Wig 101, a lot of people ask, how should I store my wig? There's not one set answer. I think the best thing is once you take your wig off, place it on a roll of paper towels. And the reason you're gonna do this is it's gonna absorb any sweat or moisture, sebum, oil production. And it's gonna keep the wig cleaner longer. Um, if you want to keep her out, you can keep her out on a roll of paper towels. Some people opt to purchase a styrofoam head, and they'll use T-pins on here, and it does allow for easy brushing and styling if you want to work on it when it's not on your head. Um, so this is a really great option, and you can find these anywhere. They have them at hobby stores. They have them um, on Amazon, so they're easy to find. Um, some wig stores and also on Amazon will sell travel stands. These happen to be metal. They also make them in a plastic variety. So this is great if you're traveling a lot and you need to pack your wig and your, your spare wig. 
you're wearing when, and your other wigs going in your luggage. So then you can just plop this together and you can store your wig on that. So whether you choose to have a large wig wardrobe or a small wig wardrobe, these tips and tricks can be helpful. Some people choose to have their wigs out on display. So they may merchandise them in their closet or in their bedroom and have different doll heads and that's perfect for them. Um, I think also if you're gonna be wearing your wig on a regular basis, having the paper towels is a really great way to keep it cleaner longer. But let's say you have a wig that's a special occasion wig and you don't wanna keep it out because you have a lot of dust in your house or you have a pet in the house or maybe small children and they're gonna come and grab it and play with it and it's just too special for that. You can definitely keep it in the box that it comes in. Um, I like to also wrap them in tissue and keep them in my sock drawer. Um, so those are some other options that you can do as well with wig storage. Don't put it on a lamp that's going to be turned on because remember they're heat sensitive. Um, so that's the one thing you can't do. So someone recently stored their wig on a lamp that they weren't using, the bulb was out, someone switched the bulb out, they turned the lamp on and it just killed the wig. So don't do that. Something along the lines of basic information I need to know about my wig that I get asked all the time how to know when to wash it. So you don't want to overwash your synthetic wig. And I can't really say there's a set amount of time when you need to wash it. So let's just say you're wearing it all day every day and you're wearing it seven days a week. Then I'd say about once a week you're going to need to wash it. But most people wear it out to lunch, wear it to work, go to an event, so that they can't really clock that, you know, how many hours they're wearing it. Realistically, the best way to know is a sniff test. So if you're like, ooh, a little aromatic, it's time to wash your wig. That's the best way to know so that you don't overwash it either. A synthetic wig has about a lifespan of a year and overwashing it's gonna cut down that lifespan. So if you're thinking to yourself, that's a little extra special version of me that I don't wanna share with the rest of the world, you can still put that wig on that day. Just remember that scent, you're having that experience. It doesn't radiate off the back of your head like if you were to walk by somebody that had dirty hair and they were hot and warm and had stinky head. Um, but let's say you went to a dinner with some friends. Maybe you went to a smoky barbecue place or you were at a beach bonfire at a safe distance from the fire. But your wig smells a little smoky. Or maybe you were out to dinner and when you walked outside, someone was smoking a cigarette and you walked by and that scent is still here. It's really easy to wash and you'll do the same washing steps that we'll go over in a minute, but you'll only need to wash it for five minutes to get that scent out. One more thing. Um, if you sniff your wig and you're thinking, I really should wash it, but you need to be somewhere, you can always spritz a little dry shampoo on the inside of your wig, and that's gonna get you through that event. Just be careful. Um, I know that sometimes when you're going through a cancer journey that people become scent sensitive, and it's really easy to accidentally overdo that and then have an unpleasant outing because you've over spritzed your wig with something that smells clean and you can't get past it that's all you're experiencing. So just be careful and mindful not to over spritz it with either perfume or any sort of dry shampoo. So a synthetic wig, as I mentioned before, is very heat sensitive. So we talked about if you like to bake or you like to cook, that you, know, you can't open the oven because that can singe or um, cause some frizzing on the bangs. And you know, the first time it happens, you can kind of fix it, but it, you can only fix it once or twice before you can't anymore. So remembering that they're heat sensitive, that also means that with the wigs that we're providing for you from Hogue, you do not want to use any sort of heating tools or styling. So no flat irons, you're not going to use a blow dryer on it. Some people use hot rollers to set their hair. It's not going to change the shape of the wig and it's not going to give it any positive attributes. If anything, it's going to create a lot of frizzing 
and it's going to take away from the style. The one thing I do love about synthetics, besides the ease of wash and wear, in weather, right now we're having weather, it's raining, you don't have to worry about this wig losing its shape or style. So if you live in an area that's more humid and your hair reacts to that humidity, your wig's gonna stay exactly the same. Same as if it's raining, you can go outside and it's gonna be perfectly fine. You might need to shake some of the water off of it when you get inside, but the shape and style is gonna be perfect. So you don't have to worry about getting your bangs perfect and then going out in the rain and then curling up. These are gonna stay the same. One of the things that we get the most questions about is these jersey scarves, which are available in the Infusion Center and Radiation Oncology waiting rooms, and also the Brighter Image program. These are free to you as well. And there are many different options for this scarf. The reason why we really like this fabric is it's a cotton jersey. So let's say this is an infinity scarf, and it actually is one giant loop of fabric. And there's two layers here right now. I'm just holding it. Um, if you can see, it opens up all the way. So let's say you're going through radiation and you're noticing that your skin is getting irritated. This scarf has a nice cooling wicking effect. So if you're having your neck radiated or your chest area, this scarf is a really, really comfortable tool, especially nice at home. You can have a small shirt on with this to help wick the heat. I have been told that women who are experiencing a little irritation in the chest area from radiation, that they've actually put this on like a bikini top and then just crossed it around a couple of times. Of course, this is at home wear and you can have it completely covering your body and still be comfortable without having a really tight abrasive top on your chest. I've also seen people wear it as a skirt. So those are some options for this scarf if you're going through radiation. I've seen some men take the same fabric and maybe they aren't so into the looping aspect of it. I've seen them just cut all the way through one side and it turns it into a nice scarf um, that a man can wear in any different style. I also want to highlight if having a port cast is part of your journey, this scarf is a really powerful tool for you as well. So you can wear this as a regular scarf. And this is great for when you go into treatment because they usually want you to have something that's fairly low cut. And if you want to have something low cut but still maintain your modesty, you can wear one of these cotton jersey scarves which are elasticized so that it's very easy to move and get out of the way for them to do a blood draw or to administer your chemotherapy. I also think these are nice if you have a port and you have friends and family around and they just wanna hug you super, super hard. Sometimes they can forget that there's a medical device so close to the surface of your skin and this gives you just a little bit of a buffer so that you don't have to worry about it when they come in and love on you hard. So let's see, and when you're getting, um, if you're in the treatment room and it gets a little bit cold and maybe you don't have anything covering your head, this can turn into a head wrap really quickly as well. So one last way that you can wear this if you have a port, and especially because summertime is coming around or could be coming around, um, you can wear this as a shawl. So what that looks like is you're just gonna put it on as you would a sweater. So you put your arm through one side and then the other side. And then you can wear a nice spaghetti strap dress um, or tank top. And then if you have that port showing, you can just bring this around here. And then you don't have to be wearing a lot of clothes and you can still have your fun spring styles, but not have your medical device exposed. That's completely up to you. Some people don't mind people seeing it. Other people want answers on how to um, cover it up. If you are a woman going through breast cancer treatment and you are having a bunch of different types of surgeries, this scarf is a really great answer for you. 
So it is a wonderful way to create volume on a chest area if you've decided that going flat is the way for you to be and that you do not want to reconstruct a breast, but every now and then you want the volume that looks as if there's a breast underneath. This scarf gives a great option for that. It is also wonderful if you've chosen to remove one of your breasts and keep the other in its natural state. You can utilize this and place it to one side or the other, and that's going to it's going to take the eye of the person looking at you in a different direction without all of that discussion about it. If you are going through a breast cancer journey and you're going through different parts of the reconstructive process, again, this is a wonderful tool to have um, to wear while you have your expanders in and you're going through the process of getting your skin ready for that implant. This gives you that protection um, from the outer world, again, if people are hugging on you too tightly, um, and also just gives you a little bit of comfort of volume if you're used to having a more voluminous chest area. So this scarf can be worn a lot of different ways. Um, the first, which is very comfortable at home, is you're just gonna get, um, let's see, that's about 10 inches of fabric and place it on your head. And so it covers the entire head from front to back. And this is for those days when you want a head covering, but maybe you're feeling a little achy and flu-like. So you're going back and forth from being really hot and really cold, and you want something loose on your head, but you don't want it to be really, really tight and uncomfortable. Then you just cross it in the back and bring it forward and you can sit around the house very comfortably. This is a great way to go get treatment. Um, it's wonderful to sleep this way too because if you are having um, some cancers, women will go through hot flashes or menopause symptoms. This will give you um, something that you can knock off really quickly and then pull back on when you're sleeping at night. And what you can do from here, let's say you're leaving your house and you're going to go meet some friends, but it feels really comfortable and you just want it to be a little snugger because it's a bit windy outside. You'll just pull it forward one more time and cross it up at the top and loop it back over your head. And so this takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of messing around to make sure it's perfectly on your head. You can put some nice big hoops or a nice big pearl or some sort of earring and that will finish your look and you're gonna be very comfortable outside. There is, yes, another way that you can tie this on your head and it involves having an elastic of some sort. So what you'll do is you'll fold the scarf onto itself. So now you have two layers of fabric. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take part of it, the top part, so this is where the two pieces are open on each other. This is where it's connected to itself. You'll fold it over six inches like that. And so once you have that folded over, you're going to place this part down on the counter in front of you. And what you're going to do is you're just going to organically pleat or ruffle that section. So it gives it a little bit of visual interest. From there, you're going to hold it fairly tight and stretch it a little bit and bring it around onto your head. And the reason why we did that little zhuzhing or um, gathering in the front was to give some dimension and height here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull it to the side so that you can see what I'm doing next. I'm going to take the elastic, and for those of you that used to have long hair and wear ponytails, this will feel familiar. You're gonna place that fabric through once all the way and the second time you're gonna pull it halfway through. And this gives a nice, loose, but secure head wrap. And if it's feeling a little too loose for you, all you have to do is tighten it right at the elastic and that's gonna give you a nice, tight head wrap and you're ready to go.